So we brought our Husqvarna auto mower in for the winter and right now it's sitting on the floor taking up a bunch of space. So Husqvarna sells a bracket for, geez, I think $100 uh, that allows you to hang the, the mower up on the wall. Uh, so I think we're going we're gonna to make one ourselves because I think it's going to require only several dollars in parts from Home Depot and mounting a single piece of wood to the wall. So if we look at the Husqvarna bracket, I think what they're doing, because I haven't seen a picture of one actually in action, is they're hanging from two of those top four screws on the base. And then in the middle, you can see where there's that little cutout, they put a couple hooks. And those hooks reach out and grab onto the handle, the carrying handle for the mower. So I was thinking about putting it basically right here. So if we kind of draw a little bit of a, how we might want it to look, I have the base here. It may be actually even larger than I'm drawing it here. So the base will be hanging, you know, maybe off of its outer, outer screws. And then here, we'll put a couple of, put a couple of hooks to, uh, to hang the mower. So what we would do is we would just mount a two x four to the wall, use some of the concrete, uh, concrete lags to screw it down. And then you just get a couple of relatively strong bolts to hang the, to hang the base. Yes, that's my, my daughter helping me out today uh, on my front pack. So we get a couple of kind of bolts to hang off of the two sides to hang the, to hang the base and then we put a couple of hooks that would come out. So maybe something that looked like this. All right, so I had threads over here, some kind of a, a cup. So the question is how far this distance here and here should be. So we can figure out what those are. I think that'll probably be the next, uh, next step. But yeah, uh, this should be easy. All right, so how deep? how deep do these hooks need to be so we're about an inch deep here it looks like from the wheels here we are I don't know, something like two and a half so we need to be at least out two and a half before we get to the hook part and then this is handles pretty thin and it goes pretty deep so I mean, we can always have the mower itself hang you know a number of inches away from the wall so we need to put it but we need to be at least out the depth of this handle to that surface and then this surface out so at least three and a half inches uh, to make sure that, that we can actually hook the thing all right so here we are back here so we've got our threaded part and we have our hook portion so this part has to be greater than three and a half inches this part of this this strand here uh, then we really do want to kind of have a hook end here because we don't want it to have any any chances of, of sliding off. So here you can see I got a piece of scrap 2x4 and I uh, just made a mark where I want the uh, where I want to make my cut. No reason to make this super long and super wide. And, uh, let's see, We're looking at about So 23 inches of, uh, of width here. That should be enough for the for hanging up the base. And uh, if you look at the way the holes are here, so I got these lag kind of lag bolts, and they are the heads are small enough to fit through the hole, which is good. Uh, that way it'll act as a little bit of a catch so we won't want to slide off but I'll also install them in a, in with a slight angle so they'll be uh, going down so that way the uh, that way the base will be held uh, kind of held by gravity against the against the wall mounted board so the other part that I was looking at is so I got these brackets from from Home Depot I think they're about a dollar a piece so I got two of them uh, one because it's good to have you know two kind of so it won't be a kind of teeter you know swinging back and forth kind of like a picture might uh, also because these guys are rated for 20 pounds uh, I don't 
I don't know if I believe it, maybe 20 pounds at the end. Uh, they're, they're pretty stiff. I mean, they don't, not flexing at all. But two of them 40 pounds, and the mower is listed by Husky as being around 30. So should be far in excess of what, uh, what we need to hold it up. Uh, but what I was concerned about, and what is kind of apparent here, is that this doesn't fit underneath. So if you want to put it on, you'd have to put the mower on an angle, kind of, kind of tip it on there. But I think what I'm going to do is measure and then nip those off. So that way I can, uh, so these hooks are a little bit shorter at the end. It'll take the plasticizer off. So might, might leave a little bit of a sharp edge. I can always try to round that off a little bit. But at least then I'll be able to slide it on easier. Won't be fighting with having to tip the mower. Kind of funny to put on here. And the other thing is the depth. I think the depth looks pretty good. Uh, it'll be you know somewhere in this kind of range. There is a little plastic stop piece here, which is pretty beefy looking. So. Not too concerned about crushing anything if it goes on a little bit too uh, too deep there. So here you go. This is what the hangers look like after they've been trimmed to length. I just used a Dremel with the uh, with the cutting disc to nip these off. It's it it took a couple minutes. Uh, definitely thick, you know, thick material here. And if you are interested, this is the bracket that I'm using. Now we can see here that. These slide underneath the handle, no problem. So it'll be set down, it'll still have a lip there, still catch, keep that from sliding off. Uh, these can also be installed at a slight angle, although I see that they're also pre-bent. Uh, they're, they're higher, if you were to install them with a screw, uh, you know, 90 degrees uh, uh, to, to, the, to your wall bracket, they're still gonna be bent up, it's still gonna wanna hold uh, want the whatever's on there to slide back towards towards the wall, which is what you want. But there's also a hook too in case uh, in case you bump the thing. So I've got my my uh, two by four cut to length. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out where the the holes should be for mounting the the uh, the ground plate, the uh, the charging station plate. And then I'm going to try to figure out where the hook should be. So what we're trying to avoid is having the mower pushing down on the charging station uh, and having the charging station hold up the mower when it's hanging. So we, we, would, we would be okay with it being like partially into the charging station, but what we don't want is to have the load of the mower pushing down on, on this uh, uh, the whole time so it may take a little bit of adjustment uh, I would not be surprised if I end up having to move uh, one or both of the sets of holes uh, but at least I can get some idea of where they're going to be uh, in terms of positioned and that will let me figure out where I'm going to uh, pre-drill the holes for the for the mounting to the wall all right so I went and found the center of this piece here and then by lining that up visually with the uh, with the mower uh, it looks like if I went here and here with the two hooks that those would be about as far apart as I could as I could go uh, so you know for good distribution and uh, and would still fit underneath the handle so what I want to do now is I want to make sure that wherever I put the uh, wherever I put the mower and the hanger that I'm not gonna be in the way of the door just so I can kind of get an idea of where exactly the, the, the the pieces. Some of the sketches here I think are going to be have to be moved. They do not represent the exact location. So if we use the door and the base can help me figure out where exactly I should be putting this. That way it'll be here. It'll be about as out of the way as it could be. But it won't be I can just mark the wall here. I need to be at least there. And you command you're gonna have the mower hanging here, but it'll be basically out of the way. So for mounting the, the wood to the wall, uh, you know, I've got a couple different choices. Uh, we can use the ram set. So this guy fires a nail into the wall with a charge, uh, into the concrete with a charge. I prefer to use this on flat surfaces where there's not like a pulling. So it's great for, you know, if you're kind of building a wall in, in, on, on a concrete. You can nail down your pressure treat and build your wall uh, because you're not necessarily pulling on the the connection to 
uh, to the concrete. You're more, you know, hold, you know, holding it laterally. Uh, in this case, I am going to use uh, a Tapcon, so it's a, uh, it's a specially designed uh, screw. So we'll pre-drill a hole, and then we'll, you know, hammer drill uh, impact drive this into, uh, you know, through the material into the wall. Uh, it's going to let us control how tight we make it, and it's going to let us do a, a bit of a better job making sure that our, our material is level. So we'll be able to move around a little bit uh, before we, we tighten all the way down. Uh, certainly for anything wall mounting, I, I definitely prefer the, uh, prefer the Tapcon approach. So for this next step, I'm going to uh, pre-drill the holes for the lags that will hold the charging station. Uh, and I'm going to pre-drill the holes for the hangers for the mower. Uh, I want to make sure uh, before I hang up, hang the, uh, hang the board on the wall, I want to make sure that everything lines up okay in terms of the pressure uh, being on the handle of the mower and, and not resting on the, the charging station. Uh, we may have to move these, but uh, we won't know until we, we put it together, and it's better to do this uh, here on the ground than, uh, than when it's already hung up. Here is what I think is going to be the final configuration for, uh, for the wall mount. I need to, need to uh, tighten those down, you know, screw those in a, a bit more. Uh, I ended up having to switch the holes. Originally, I was using the, uh, using the outer holes here. Uh, I wasn't able to get enough height difference between the bottom of these hooks and the part where uh, where the mower you know, plugs in here. So uh, because of that, I couldn't actually get the handle over, the, over these hooks. So I switched from the outer to the inner holes and dropped down to give myself another half an inch or so. Uh, we pre-drilled and countersunk the holes for the, uh, for the Tapcon, uh, Tapcon screws. These are uh, pre-drilled bigger than the Tapcon, so the Tapcon will pass right through here. Uh, we don't need the Tapcon to thread into this. In fact, we kind of want it to float. We want the Tapcon to pull it flush to the uh, to the wall when, it, when it's torqued down. Uh, and then I was I moved these guys up, and I ended up having to trim off just a little bit more here uh, because of the way the mower goes in, the tip of the mower is down uh, because it does kind of start to enter the enter this part. But because it's down, it changes the angle. Uh, of where the of where these guys go in so they weren't able to fit underneath I, I nipped off another I don't know, a quarter inch or so of those guys so with those adjustments uh, everything fits okay so here's my dry fit so you can see that the uh, the base goes through the goes through these uh, you know hangs on these bolts and underneath here it's a little bit tough to see but you can see that these guys go flush up against that that handle part so we're in good shape and then the other part that I was concerned about was just not putting any pressure on on these contacts. So it is making some amount of amount of contact here, but it's not all the way flush. And so normally this would this would drive in another another inch or so. So we're not putting any we're not going to be putting any real load on this part of the uh, of the stand when it's hung up.